Hey, good morning and happy Sunday. Glad we can be together here today and glad that we can be continuing on through our series through the book of Proverbs called The Path and to be exploring this subtitle of Direction Determines Destination. How do we get on the right path that goes where we are trying to go? You know, sometimes the the right path isn't always very obvious. We get ourselves into these positions where we're not really sure what the right way is to go. And it's in those times that, that we need a little help along the way. That's the title for my sermon today, Help Along the Way. And we'll be talking about that a little bit. Uh, a little bit about me, if you don't know me, I, I like to do things with my hands. I, I like projects, you know, whether that's uh, in our uh, yard or on the house. 
uh, like working on uh, vehicles or building things in, in the garage. And in the times where I'm not actually working on projects, the shows that I like the most are other people working on their projects, <laughs> whether that's their houses or their vehicles or the other things that they enjoy doing. Uh, and I can get myself into a little bit of trouble sometimes because I'll watch people like knock out a wall in their house. You know, hey, you know, wouldn't it be great if this was all open? And then they show a little drawing and then, you know, they snap and do their Hollywood magic. And all of a sudden there's a hole in the wall and it looks really beautiful. And I think, oh, man, like, I wonder if I wonder if I can knock out any walls at my house, you know, or, you know, you see uh, I like some of these car restoration shows and they'll find this really cool old car, but it's in kind of rough shape and it needs a lot of work. And they say, oh, you know, a little bit of paint and, you know, uh, an engine swap and, and we'll be off and running. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, you know, a little bit of paint and, and an engine swap, you know, no problem. Uh, and then also then, you know, they uh, you see time lapse video and they, you know, get all the rust off and they send it in the paint booth. And then you see them bring the engine hoist over and they just unhook everything and pull the old engine out. And then, oh, hey, we got this new engine. And then they just put that one in and hook everything back up. Piece of cake. Uh, or, uh, one of the shows I enjoy watching is Forged in Fire. Uh, it's these, uh, this competition show people are, you know, doing blacksmithing, making knives. And, uh, I have, I have never once hit hot steel with a hammer. And yet I can sit in, in my chair and I can watch the show and say, no, 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 don't do that. That's not a good thing. You know, oh, try this other thing instead. Or, oh, that's a bad idea. And, I feel like I know a lot because I've watched, you know, a few of the episodes. But one of the hardest things in life is is knowing what you don't know. And that's the problem watching all those shows. They make it look easy. They're, you know, lending their wisdom to the situation. And we're kind of along for the ride and think, oh, yeah, piece of cake. But when, when we're living our own lives, just knowing what we don't know is is one of the hardest things to figure out. There's a famous quote by Aristotle, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And I think that's true about life. I think just having the idea that there are these areas of our lives or these other spheres that, that we really don't know what's going on. There's the things that we know, and there's the things that we know we don't know, and then there's this whole other realm of the things we don't know that we don't know. So how do we, when we're facing those things in life, how do we avoid those traps and pitfalls and, and those problems that, that lie in those areas where we don't know what we don't know? I think the Bible has several things to say about that. In, uh, in James chapter 1, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously. Right? I think there's certainly something to that of, of praying through these things in our lives that we we don't know what's going on or we don't know the best thing to do uh we're going through the book of proverbs right now and solomon opens in proverbs chapter one that uh this book is meant for gaining wisdom right we can be reading through the scriptures certainly not all of the books in the bible are meant to be giving advice or giving wisdom but that is a lot of, of the scripture and what God is trying to do in our lives through the Bible is to help us understand the best way forward. How do we live our lives the way that God designed them to be lived? But Solomon also had this to say in the book of Proverbs. And in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22, it says, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. You know, I also very much believe that God puts people in our lives to help us along the way. That the people who have have learned the things that, that there is to learn in this life, the people who have been to the places we want to go, that we have those people around us and they are a, a resource. You know, but just the idea of of asking somebody who knows when we have a problem, it it seems really simple. But in practice it it actually gets kind of challenging uh, to ask for help, right? Sometimes it's uh, we fall into the trap of, of just thinking we've got it figured out. You know, we don't ask for help because we think we already know all this stuff. The, the amount of times that I've been ignorant <laughs> in my life uh, is a massive list that we're not going to go into right now. But sometimes we think we don't, we don't need help. We don't need advice for the things that we're facing. 
I think a lot of times we would rather be independent or we don't want to look foolish. So that's the motivation behind not getting advice. We don't want people to know or we don't want to, to be the kinds of people that don't have the answers. And so we wrestle with this pride of, of not letting other people into our lives. I think there's some kind of good <laughs> stereotypical examples of that. Uh, guys, mostly, of uh, not wanting to ask for directions when we're lost or not wanting to follow the instructions when we get a new tool or a new Ikea piece of furniture or whatever. Um, of just wanting to be self-sufficient. I think that's a cultural value of being able to do things ourselves and not needing help. Uh, but it definitely can be uh, a rough place to be when we face a part of life where we don't really know what to do. Also, there's a, there's a trap of being overwhelmed by the amount of work that it might take to either acquire advice or to put it into practice. Uh, whether that comes from laziness, it's just going to be a lot of work, or or fear, where there's uh, it's not just about physical energy, but emotional energy of tackling the things that, that we're facing in life, especially if there are situations that are, are near and dear to our heart, or expose us as people, the things that, that are in our characters, that are going to require a, a substantial amount of effort or emotional energy to deal with. Um, those are our three traps I think are really easy to fall into that uh, the idea of getting help along the way of asking advice from somebody who knows it, it's not as simple as it sounds. When I think about in life though the most important areas that the things that are most important to me my my spiritual life my relationship with God my pursuit of, of being a disciple of Jesus uh, my marriage uh, to Gina and, and our relationship and how to be a godly husband and to my kids, how to be a, a godly father and, and to raise them both to be uh, adults of strong character and to be faithful people. Uh, those are, are the things that are, are maybe the most important to me in this life. Um, and as a church family, those are the things we focus on a lot and those are the things we really need a lot of advice and wise counsel about. You know, I wanted to spend the rest of our time uh, today talking about some of the ways that we can be sure to get good advice. I had three things I wanted to talk about here on the ways to get good counsel. The first thing is to be humble. We are always going to need advice about something. I, I would like to think that for me, going through life uh, I'm going to learn a thing or two and have some experience and then I, I won't be always facing these areas where I'm not really sure what to do. Um, I would like to believe that. And yet, I know that there's always going to be something that I'm facing that is new to me or that I'm, I haven't always handled the best and that I, I'm going to need some advice. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15, it says, The way of fools seem right to them but the wise listen to advice. I, I definitely don't want to be in that category of fool. Uh, to think that I've got it all sorted out or that I will someday arrive and, and kind of outgrow the need of counselors. Uh, I'm always going to need advice about something if I'm, if I'm going to be humble. Uh, and I think that's the first key to getting good advice. I think in our, in our lives, um, whether it's a, a time of uncertainty, when we know we don't, don't have the right answer, we're not really sure what the right path is, or if there's a, a life decision or a course of action that is particularly large, um, you know, it's fine to, uh, to get advice on, hey, what's the best thing to eat here? You know, oh, I recommend the number four with extra cheese. Okay, cool. Um, but there are things in life that are, are big, you know, if we're going to get married or buy a house or move or pursue these things that, that are large, let's get advice about those and be humble. Second thing, go to good counselors. The difference between wise counselors and unwise counselors is enormous. Uh, if you're going to pick out somebody to get advice to, that you're going to base some of your life decisions on, go to somebody who has been where you want to go. If you want to get advice about your spiritual life, your pursuit of, of God and, 
being a disciple of Jesus, go to somebody who, who knows the scriptures better than you, who is, has a maturity of their faith that will give you good advice. Uh, if you want to, to grow in your marriage, there's a, a particular challenge that you've been facing. Go to somebody who has a great relationship with their spouse. Same with kids, right? Ask parents who have kids who are a little bit older than yours and whose kids are, are exhibiting the character traits or the, the rhythms that, that you really want to see in your family. Go to somebody who's been where you want to be. You know, there's a, a passage Paul talks about in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 of the, how easy it is to gather around you teachers or counselors that will say what your itching ears want to hear. And I, I think that's a, a big deal when we're talking about advice of needing to be genuine with what we're trying to accomplish. It's really easy to find somebody that will give you a thumbs up to do whatever you want to do. Uh, but it's something different, somebody who will give you good advice. Uh, let's read here in uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 10, a story about uh, Rehoboam. He's the son of Solomon, right? We're going through the, the Proverbs. Solomon uh, wrote most of them. And here's a, a story about his son when his son becomes king. So we'll start here, Second Chronicles chapter 10. In verse 1, Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam son of Nebat heard this, he was in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon, he returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam, and he and all Israel went to Rehoboam and said to him, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. Rehoboam answered, Come back to me in three days. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people, he asked. And they replied, If you will be kind to these people and please them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. He asked them, What is your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, Lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, The people have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on you a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam. As the king had said, come back to me in three days. The king answered them harshly, rejecting the advice of the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, my father made your yoke heavy. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. You know, if you keep reading the story, uh, the people rebel. And it says in verse 19 uh, that Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David ever since. It's, it's just an example of the difference between wise and unwise counselors. Uh, you can see here Rehoboam wrestling with, with what he wants to do. Uh, that's that was our first secret to getting a good advice, right? Is to be humble. He's already kind of decided what he wants to do and is looking for somebody to tell him it's okay to do what he wants. But he rejects the wise counselors and he goes to some of his buddies who are going to think it's cool to, to be in power and to flex. But it goes really poorly because he had chosen for himself poor counselors. He'd actually done several very good things, right? He'd asked for some time to make a good decision. Hey, give me three days. He had decided to get counsel and he'd even gotten counsel from several people. Uh, but at the end, he just was not interested in the counsel of the wise. You know, one of the things that I think um, is important for us to talk about on the topic of wise counselors is the difference between getting permission for something and getting advice about something. Uh, those things are, are really different, right? There's things in our, our lives where we, we wrestle with different decisions. And especially if we know we're supposed to be humble and get advice, it's a lot more tempting to try and find somebody who's going to tell you that it's okay to do what you want to do. Like Rehoboam, right? He rejected the counsel of the elders and instead went to see somebody who thought he that would give him permission to do what he wanted to do. Uh, that's really different than getting advice, right? It's not about searching around until you find somebody that's going to
give you the thumbs up to do what you want to do. It, it is about trying to gain wisdom and to wrestle with those things and how does this best fit into my life. Last thing we're going to talk about today, ask more than one person. If you can find more than one wise counselor, get as much wisdom as you can, uh, especially for the things that are really important about this life. Uh, in Proverbs 11, verse 14, it says, For lack of guidance a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. It says victory is won through many advisors, not just a single advisor, but that we are able to get as much wisdom and experience about the situation we're facing as, as possible. Even if we're able to find more than one qualified counselor, like we talked about in the last point, somebody who is wise about the situation that we're facing, people have their own experiences and perspectives that all will contribute a little bit to the, the situation that we're trying to deal with. Now, uh, we got to make sure we're not taking this as permission to uh, hunt for the right person to give us the advice we want to hear or to be gossiping, to be spreading information beyond where it should go. I know there's always hard situations that we are facing as a church family, uh, certainly as we do life together, and we need to make sure that we are being considerate of, of each other. However, the, the general wisdom is to get more wisdom. If we're able to find more than one person that can contribute, more advisors is certainly better. I'm really grateful for our, our staff and eldership. The amount of times I've gone to Daryl or Walt or Dana uh, since we've been here is innumerable. And I'm grateful for being able to serve together. And it's certainly an example in my life when uh, a number of counselors will give us victory. So let me ask you, is there something that you're looking at in your life right now that you're not really sure of the way forward? If it's one of those three things we talked about before, our spiritual lives or our marriages or, or raising our kids or something besides that, I would encourage you to, to follow these three things, to be humble, to get wise advisors and to, to talk to more than one person. The encouragement from Solomon today is that that is how we're going to reach the destination we want. That's how victory will be assured. That's how we will not come to ruin. Uh, is by searching for good advice. Let's not fall into these traps of ignorance or pride or being afraid to commit to solving the, the issue that, that stands before us. But when the way gets confusing or we're not sure, let us get help along the way. Stay safe and keep the faith.
myself I belong to you Only in me Lead me to the cross To your heart To your heart Thanks for joining us today. We hope it's something that has been helpful in preparing you spiritually for the week to come. Please continue to follow us online, southsoundcoc.org, or you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. We are always here to serve you. If you need to talk to our staff or elders for any reason, please find us online at the Contact Us page or the Next Steps page. We'd be happy to help as much as we can. For any of our members or people who want to contribute financially, you can go to our website and click on the Give button. That will take you to the Tithely app so we can continue to be faithful in our giving. For all of the kids out there, we're creating new content and posting it to our virtual kids corner. Please tune in, especially on Sundays, to see what we have for the kids. Until next week, stay safe and keep the faith.